Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Auto Tutorials by Level Notion Studios. My name is Lydia and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create character clothes simulation in Blender 2.8. Let's get started. So in this tutorial I'll be using Anuva for this practice. So the first thing you see here is that our skirt is simulated. You see the skirt wrapped around our leg. So that's to show you. I'm going to show you how you are going to how to recreate this um, simulation. So I'm going to show you the animation. So I won't be able to play back real time because of the speed. So if I try to play now, it's, um. about two frames per second or two three frames per second so that's just too slow so i'm going to play back the play blast by did so view animation so this is the clue simulation we'll be we're creating in this video so another thing i'm going to show you if you can see here uh, the shoe is penetrating the skirt so i'm going to show you and tell you why this is happening so you can i can actually do this without the shoe penetrating but i just wanted to show you how to use different collision while working with clothes simulation in blender so i'm going to close this now and the first thing i'm going to do so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to delete sorry so the first thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to delete the unnecessary um modifiers from this from this list of modifiers we have i have about two subdivision i'm going to delete one the solidify which is responsible for the thickness of the skirt and the difference between the colors so i'm going to delete that the particle system which is this um this decoration the glitter on our skirt here and here so i'm going to delete them too so we don't really need them for this video so the only thing left now is the clothes the subdivision and the armature so let me remove um particles from here too so that it loads faster so now i'm going to select the skirt and you see the animation is still there because those other subdivision and particles they are after they are after the um, cloth simulation so it won't mess up the clothes so now i'm going to delete this and recreate it so let me go to the beginning go to clothes and click on close so now if i scrub through see the animation the first thing to do when you want to create clothes simulation for your character is make sure the clothes has the same armature as the character's body. So let me select the body. I have the character as a rig. Make sure that your clothes also have the same rig, which is this. So they both share the same rig. That's the first thing. So the first, second thing is to assign the clothes modifier to the mesh. You can either go, uh, come to the modifier properties and click here to add clothes or you go to the physics properties and click on clothes. So by doing this, let me go to the first frame. When I click on play, the clothes start dropping, starts dropping from our body. So this is not what we need. So after creating the clothes simulation, the next thing to think about is the collision right now the cloth is just falling without any collision just the the only force that is responsible right now is the gravity so the gravity is just pulling it down and there's no opposite force to counter the gravity so to do this the, the next thing you have to worry about now is the collision there are two types of collision the first one is the floor let me hide this the first one is the floor which is this floor 
and the second one is the body collision so let me show you the two so this is the body collision this is a body collision and this is the floor collision so these are the two collisions responsible for the last simulation i played so this particular one doesn't have to be dense so the most important thing to watch out for is where the character is going to collide with the mesh if i want our hand to eat the clothes i would have added our arms the full arms but that is not important for the project we use the character for so that was why that is why the collision is like this so and this particular face is here because of the earring so i want the earring to collide with the face that's why this face is here but for this particular one we don't need the upper part of the body the only thing we need is this lower part the reason why the shoe was going through the other one i showed you was because the shoe is not part of the collision so if you want the the shoe to to respect the clothes as as an object you have to make sure the shoe also has a collision so now to create a collision we're not going to use this one i created we're going to create a new one so to create a collision i'm going to duplicate the character's body shift d and i'm going to rename this to body underscore call so this is the new collision we'll be using for this video so now all i need for my body right now is from here downward i don't need the upper part of the body so i'm going to go to edit mode isolate it then alt click to select the loop x to delete the faces then go to vertex mode which is this dot on one then l to select everything x delete so right now this is the mesh here the reason why it jumped here is because i'm using the blend rig and the mesh is the, the former is responsible for the skin so that's why it's jumping here so i'm going to have to rebind this mesh so i'm going to come here So let me just sorry let me just rebind this unbind then let me take to five for the purpose of this video bind so this is what we are going to use as our deformer so right now we have our half body as the collider so the next thing we are going to do after creating the body collider is add a collider tag to it so to do this you go to let me delete the subdivision because it's not needed you have to make sure your collider is as light as possible the this particular one i did i think i even deleted some edge loops that are not important so just make sure it is very light so now i'm going to go to the uh, physics properties and click on collision so now this skin is a collider if i play this you see that the skirt is blowing up and that is because of the scale of my scene i'm using the scale one which is actually very tiny if you're using centimeters which is 0 0.01 you won't have to do this so right now the collision is between the body and the cloth is huge so the, the next thing i'm going to do is to reduce this collision so now if i go to under collision under the physics tab i will reduce the inner thickness from 0.2 to the minimum so now if i play it again let me reduce the outer too it's reduced but it's not um is is not very close to the body so what i did with this other one is i selected the mesh itself alt s to 
to um, reduce the the thickness. So Alt S to shrink the mesh. But if I'm using a very big big thing, you won't have to do this. So these settings here or shrinking the collision depends on the scale of your scene. So this is not a permanent settings. You have to work with it to know the right settings that work for your scene, for your character. So now if I try to play it, so that the cloth is just falling on the character's body, so it's not blowing apart. Yeah, so this is a very good settings. So right now, if you notice, the cloth is sliding down the character's body. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is pinning. I need to pin this character's, at least the waist parts, especially when you're working with um, maybe a scarf or something that can really easily slide off the body. You have to make sure you pin those areas you don't want to move, you don't want them to move or you don't want them to really move. You have to pin them down. So I'm going to show you the last one I did. So if I come here and click on and type me pinning, let me go to weight pin so you can see. So now you see that red means one. Red means one, then blue means no strength. That's no weight. So right now, the places that are painted red will be one. That means they won't move at all. Then the place, places that are painted green will move a little bit. So if you check the last animation I played, you see that the, the frontal part of the skate is kind of rigid. You see that it's hardly moving. It's not falling down. That's because of this painting I did. So I didn't want this front to to bend so is, i want them to move but not to i don't I, I didn't want them to move too much that's why i added a little bit of weight to this other to this part but this other part has no weight at all so that means these ones are influenced by the properties of the clothes so now i'm going to use the same weight or okay, okay let's recreate let's recreate it so go to weight paint create a new one me pin me pin HT. so this is what we are going to use now to create i want this upper part to to stay so make sure you go to your tools under weight paint and with the draw make sure you're in draw so i want this place to hold i don't want them to move at all Then I will I want this place to just move a little bit. So I'm going to change the strength. Just something small. Something light. So just pin this. So it will move as such. Make sure. Okay, X mirror is on. So now let's say this is what we want. We want this place to stay in place to follow the rig. So this is where your rig comes in. If your character is attached, if the cloth is attached to the rig, so this part will always follow the rig and this part will follow the rig. So now if I go to object mode, I'll go to my uh, physics properties and under Under shape, under pin group, you look for the one we just created. Now, if I run the simulation again by clicking on play, see that this part is staying put, while this part is also staying put, so it's hardly moving. So now we have a very good foundation. So the next thing now is, you see that the skirt is falling and passing through the floor. The next thing to do is the floor collider. So now I'm going to use the last one I use, which is 
the floor collision this one so i'll add the collision tag to it again and this was the last settings i used for the previous um simulation so blender still remembers so 0 0.01 0 0.01 and the friction is one the friction is responsible for how much the um cloth slide on the mesh if the friction is very low the that means the surface is very very slippery and the um the cloth will won't really stick to the surface but with 10 friction it won't slide too much and i feel 10 is a perfect um blend for the friction friction that's why i inserted 10. for the body the friction is actually five or you can increase it to 10 if you like but for now i'm going to leave it at at five so now if i play this again you see that the cloth is not going through the floor it's just sliding on the surface and instead of shrinking if i come to the side view instead of shrinking you see that the floor collision is a little bit below the floor this is the floor here this is the collision it's just for you to respect the it's just it's just like what i did with the body the shrinking of the body so this one too i decided to bring it down so that the cloth will slide directly on the floor if i move it up a little bit if i move down a little bit this cloth will move down too so if i click on it and g to slide it down just a little bit and rerun the simulation so you see that it's is not as high as it was so just put this in mind while working with your scene if you are working with other measurements this might just run smoothly without going through this also of shrinking and pulling down stops so this is what we have now so playing this now you see everything is just working out fine so the other setting i did is the quality step i usually use 20 with 20 quality step your simulation will be much more richer than using five so i usually change this to 20 and depending depending on the kind of material i'm, I'm simulating but the list i usually use is one so one for bending and i usually will use this so depending on the material but for this case i used one and i used the quality step 20. so those are the only things i changed i didn't change any other thing so now to bake your simulation right now if i bake it i if i leave this to run to the end and i re i reopen blender i have to keep doing that all the time so to save this on your hard drive you have to come to cash and bake when you bake it it saves it when you click this cache it's going to save it on your hard drive so now if i click on bake it's going to bake the animation for me and save it on my drive don't forget to change the end frame or the start frame so my animation is up to 300 yeah it's up to 300 so make sure you change the end frame to 300 because wherever whichever figure whatever figure you add here is what is where the simulation will stop so make sure you set it to end frame make sure you set this to this cache so it's going to cache on your disk because if you just bake it without clicking on this cache it's going to run per section so by the time you reopen blender it's not going to work you have to re bake it so now by clicking on this cache and if i click on bake now it's going to save it to my drive i'm not going to do that for this video i'm not going to do that for this video i'm just i'm going to show you so when you bake it's going to save it in here so i have just four frames that was we have four here now, now let me bake three four five click on escape so eight frames now you see we have eight frames so that's you see now that you have um all the cache files so now i had a backup 
that I used for the previous one. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So now if I open, reopen this scene, it's going to load the ones I pasted. So I don't have to do it from scratch. So this is another method. If you want to transfer cached file from one system to another, or you rename your file and you don't want to rerun the simulation, you can just copy the data and paste it. As far as the naming is the same, Blender saves as blend cache underscore the name of the scene. So if I change this name of this scene to any other thing, all I need to do is just change rename this change this to the name of the new scene so that's how you create clothes simulation for your character in blender i hope i've been clear and i didn't talk too much <laughs> thank you for watching don't forget to like the video subscribe to level nation studios if you've not done so Click on the notification bell to get notified every time we upload videos like this. And until next time, stay true to your creativity. Bye-bye.